I, I believe so. I mean, I told Keon at halftime, you got no rebounds. What happened to that guy I saw? I told him, you get five in the second half, we'll win. Good news, he got four. He went out and got rebounds. You, you, we got out-rebounded today. We had, every, again, thinking about the wrong stuff. But, you know, it was a really physical game. The screens were, you know, you were getting leveled. And, uh, again, um, we did some good stuff offensively in the first half. And then, like, we miss a bunch of, you know, some wide open stuff, which is fine. You're not going to make every shot. But I, I thought we fought on defense. And, um, you know, you look at the numbers, you know, you would say, wow. Um, but, you know, we win the game, we move on, next game. By, by the way, by the way, Davion played unbelievable today. Really, really good. And you know who was happy for him? Ty Ty. Like, hugged him. Like, that, that's what this team has been. Well, at one point, they're, they're not allowed to dislodge. In other words, if I have a position, they cannot push me off that position, like push back. And, and when I say push back, I'm not saying an inch. I'm saying two feet. You can't screen sideways. You can't. You turn sideways and knock a guy in and whack him, you can't. And, and there were things that went on, and I'm trying to protect my players. I don't want anybody to get hurt. You know, you just you're coaching a game and saying you you know, hey, but you know the the again there were you know uh, enough stuff that was done in the game that um, you know like I told them after guys if I watch that tape and I'm an opposing coach I say let's just try to beat the crap out of a couple of these guys they'll go away can't accept that you got to beat them two spots you got to be the first to hit. You got to be quick coming off screens. You can't be late so the guy can move, physically move a foot and knock you down. You can't. You got to be body to body so that becomes so obvious a foul, they got to call it. Did you, you said Mims played unbelievable. Was part of that defense? I thought you put him in early on Pippen to try to. No, I put him in early because Ty, or, um, um, uh, Savir had two fouls. But, you know. Again, he is uh, a guy that uh, – how about that rebound on that free throw? That was a big play. I'm trying to get other guys to do that, what he just did, and it's just too rough. I'm not I, – I try to move, but if the guy hits me, I stop and I run back. He doesn't. He just is relentless. And he also runs the floor. He and Kellen spread the court out. I went – Later in the game, I just went to a, 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 a Oscar and our point guard and spread the court and just played that way. And the reason I did it, I didn't want anybody to get hurt. It was so physical. So now it's so obvious that you're whacking somebody, they got to call it. No, no, no. What, what happened, um, you know, I'm looking around the country. Many coaches are just doing what they do in the NBA, which I did. I acknowledged him. Um, but I got worried after the last game. Did you see what happened to one of the Kansas players after the last game? What? What happened? Guy has COVID. He has COVID. Basically, he played with COVID. And now I'm like saying, I'm not sure we should shake hands until give us another two weeks. The stuff we're doing with you, Zooming, it's perfect. I don't need to be in everybody's company. And the same thing with the line. I saw, um, I think it was South Carolina and Miss Mississippi State. I saw those two coaches, great guys, both of them. They just gave the peace sign and they left. 
And they told the team, you know, we just, we don't need that right now. But no, there was, that was nothing. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm fine. I mean, they, they did good stuff. They run good stuff. They create good shots. Um, you know, uh, they're uh, – I'm glad we're done playing them. They got the big kid now. They got another guy with size who can play. So we're done. We, we're done. If we see him again, it'll be in the tournament. And I hope we don't see him in the tournament. Wow, and they were all big. He made three jumpers that were huge. The one as the clock expired. Um, the dunk, I told him, look, you wanted to make it something hard instead of making it an easy play because you might miss it. It's all that mentality that we got to just keep on holding him accountable. But I'm saying this, he has been so much better. Um, Again, all I want him to do is, when I look at that rebounding chart, his attempts are in the mid-80s. If he does, he's going to get eight or nine rebounds. That his sprints are 17, 18 sprints that are A's and three or four that are B's. Because now he's going to be ahead of the action. He's going to get a couple dunks. He's going to get a couple threes or 15-foot or, uh, corner shots. He's going to get, and he makes those. And then that's where he builds his confidence. If you're getting knocked around, it's hard to be confident. It really is. And he's, I'm, like I said, I'm really proud of him. Um, you know, like I said prior to the game, don't try to live up. I don't want you to have the weight of the world on you again. You just play. Just play. You don't have to make every shot. You're going to miss some. Just play. Get the weight of the world. Get it off you. You just be a great player and enjoy this team. And he is. He has a smile on his face. Gary Tipton, go ahead. Look, Dan, you mentioned that uh, you saw a little bit of the rat poison out there. You mentioned rebounding. rebounding. Anything else that you saw that suggested to you that? I got to watch the tape. You know, I watch the tape. I mean, Ty Ty you know, kind of coming up limping early in the game, got me like, oh, you got to be kidding me. And, uh, but he came back and played. I got to check on that. I have not seen him to ask him that. We had a short three minute post game meeting. So, um, but I watched the tape. We're going to, we're going to watch the tape probably around noon tomorrow because of this ice storm. Uh, we're not going to be able, we were thinking about leaving tomorrow if we could get out, but we're not going to be able to. We're hoping that we can, the ice will subside and we can get out on Friday, but we may not be able to get out on Friday. You know, I'm, um, you know, we're just going to follow the weather, and but we're not going to put ourselves in any kind of tough position traveling wise. Well, he he's good with the ball. He's crafty. He's good in pick and rolls. Um, he plays great against us. I mean, he always has. Every game I've coached against him, the kid is probably averages 30 against us. He wish he played us five times a year. Well, let me tell you what's helping Lance. He now has become one of the guys that's in the gym, living in the gym. He's one of those guys now. And so he's building his own confidence. It's not how much I play him. When he gets minutes, he's confident he's going to play well. And so he's out there playing well. Rebounding, he fights, he talks, he's smart. He's one of the smartest basketball players we have. And when you have a big guy that's that way and you can run some things through him, in other words, now he can be a, 
a dribble handoff guy. He could be a, a, a re-screener because he's smart. He can see it. Um, and he's complimentary. He compliments Oscar, how Oscar plays when he needs to go in. But I put him in. He only had three fouls. My staff said we had four. So then it was like, I think he only has three. But he had three when I sat him down. He did not have four. He had three. Got his fourth later. So we had a little, little screw up that we got to square away because you can't have that in these games. Larry Barr, coming back to you. Don't it look like maybe a loss was one of the rare times that Oscar got a little frustrated a time or two during the game? I, I think they, they egged him on, Larry. And, and now, what do you think the other coaches that are watching this game are going to say? Yeah, don't, don't let him move. In other words, if he tries to cut, chest him, you know, bump him, do stuff to, to aggravate him. He's going to have to be smart because now that's what they'll do because uh, you, you can't stop his progress from running unless you do, and they let you do it. And then you push, what do they say? Well, you fouled. So, you know, like I said, physical game, but it is what it is. No, no, we um, like, uh, you know, tomorrow's practice will be film and script and, you know, Friday's practice, if we're going to be able to get out, it will be a normal day before a game practice. You can't go crazy. Someone will get hurt. If we get ready for a really good Alabama team. I mean, it's, you know, you're on the road and I imagine it'll be packed like every game we play. Good news is we've We've walked into arenas like that, so we'll see. It's going to be a hard game for us. All right, thank you, Coach. John Hale, we'll begin with you. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many guys on this team that's capable of getting 20. I don't know if you said I was the sixth or seventh, uh, sixth, but, I mean, I can count five more guys on our team uh, outside that can do it as well. Um, like I said, this team is very talented, and uh, what goes into that is that unselfishness. Um, I didn't know how much I had at the time, but – uh, after the game, Savir came to me. He's like, bro, I kept passing it to you so you get fouled, like get the 20 ball. And I was like, man, appreciate that. Like, that's love. So, um, I mean, that's the type of team we have. Uh, I'm sorry, what's the last part of the question you said? Just the challenges after everybody's talking so well about you guys in the Oh, yeah. I mean, when you're a top team like that and you're publicized everywhere, um, it's it's easy to get caught into it. So, But Coach wants us to stay even keel, and he mentions that every day. Um, and for him, he knows how it feels to be successful for a very long time. So when he speaks, we listen to stuff like that. Um, you got to stay humble. I mean, this is about humility and uh, know that you you know that we're special and we understand that, but still know that everyone wants that top spot. And uh, when we have it, you got to secure it. And um, you know that's that's what we're trying to do, and that's the attitude we have to have to keep going forward. Uh, just be confident, but understand that you got to be humble. Barry Tipton. Mm. Man, if I took my sweater off right now, you see all the scratches on my arm. I was fighting for it. I mean, um, 
I'm only six three. Like it was there was dudes out there uh, bumping, pushing, but I just slipped around them. Uh, once I saw which side of the rim it hit, I always try to run to that side. I know we call X, but I usually watch the ball and see how it's spinning so I could run over there and go get it. And uh, once I grabbed it, Tata made a big play uh, off the rebound. So that was that was a huge part of the game for us, for sure. And you have been struggling a little bit, right, shooting the last few games. What, uh, uh, what, what got you going? Man, um, honestly, it was uh, – Right after the Kansas game, I was walking out the locker room and it was this little girl. She um she was like probably like a young teenager and uh like she's crying her eyes out as she's walking up to me and I'm like, What's going on? Like and she was just like, I'm just so excited to meet you. This is my first time, you're my favorite player, I've been waiting a year. And I had zero points. Like I played I didn't really even play a full half of a game, you know what I mean? And my heart was kind of heavy because I knew I had been struggling for a while, but like just to realize that, you know, God made me somebody that could make someone else feel special about themselves, so that just sent me over the top. And I knew, you know, and my parents saw it, my cousin was at the game, he saw it, and uh, she couldn't even keep herself together. And that was just like, that meant so much to me that it meant so much to her. And um, that right there is what motivates me like that. You know, people could feel so special about themselves, and it made me work hard getting a gym. And, you know, that's what turned out for today. So thank her if she's listening right now. Why you? Why do you think you're her big favorite? I think I just fight. I mean, I don't know what she's going through. I don't know what was going on in her life. But um, for me, I just try to resemble fight uh, when I go out there and my team, like, just do whatever it takes for the team to win. And, even though it may not be my night shooting the ball, it may be someone else's night, I'm going to try to find something. And if that's nothing I can do on the court, then be on the bench trying to do something. But I got to give energy to this team. So maybe she uh, you know, could resemble that in her life or she felt something. I, I don't know. Lonnie Demery? Unmute yourself, Lonnie. Oh yeah, no, Lance is a warrior. Um it doesn't I mean I know it surprises you guys, but Lance He's so consistent in his effort, like every day in practice, the way he comes out here and plays, he doesn't take a practice off. Like it'll be two, three games in a row he may not play, but his intensity the next day in practice is like he's the loudest person on the team. He's always yelling. He's always talking like crap to other people uh, in a good way. Um, I mean, his energy is just unmatched. So when he comes out here and plays well and picks up right where, you know, someone left off, it, it doesn't surprise us. but. Like I said, um, Lance, he, he's a special person and a special player. Like, he just – he comes out and fights. That's all he knows. And um, he steps up big for us. I mean, in clutch moments, I mean, look how he played versus Kansas. I mean, he was amazing coming out there. And um, his attitude is just always top tier. Like, he doesn't pout. He's always cheering for everybody else. So, when success comes to him, it shouldn't be surprising. We can't hear you, Lonnie. Jeff Drummond. Oh, Jeff Drummond, go ahead, and Lonnie will come back to you. I come off the bench for Lonnie. It's a big shot. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm wondering, uh, I can't recall a game since you've been here that was quite that physical, rugged, like that. Is that, is that the kind of roughest game that maybe you can recall playing in here? Yeah, I think so. Um, I can't even really think right now, but yeah, um, they came to fight. Like they, the SEC is, is the best conference in the, in the country uh, right now. So when teams, you know, I, I think we won by seven. Like when teams come in here and they want to uh, 
they want to play hard. I mean, we have a great audience, a great platform, so guys aren't going to come here and uh, lay down. But like I said, the SEC is a competitive conference, and um, Vanderbilt, they, they came to fight, and so is every other team we play in this conference. Any other questions for Davion? If not, we will let him go. Oh, Tyler Thompson, go ahead. Hey, Davion. That story you told about the young fan is really special. Mm. Now, when you came back to Kentucky, was that the kind of connection you were craving? Yeah. Um, I mean, when you – when you uh, – Life is crazy. Like when you're so stuck in yourself and you you fighting your everyday struggles and some things may not be perfect in your life. Like everyone needs situations like that. Um, I I never expected you know that someone would be crying about me. Like honestly, I mean sometimes I think like man it's just basketball. I'm here. They love it. They love us. But no, like these people have personal connections to us. And um, she felt some type of way that day, and it was just it was crazy. Like. And she had uh, Quickly's jersey on. And she she just kept crying as I was signing. She was like, I tried to get yours. And I was just like, it's OK, like just trying to comfort her. But like it was crazy um, that, you know, that these people, I mean, I'm speaking for more than her, that people out here feel this way about us. So that's why we go out there and fight. That's why we go out there and give it uh, our all. I mean, this means a lot to people. And uh, I appreciate it. And I, I feel the love everywhere. Um, since the moment I came back and since the moment I stepped here. All right, thank you so much, Davion, and congratulations. Appreciate it. Keon Brooks, we're going to start with Jared Tipton. Dan, how, uh, how rough was this game? How physical was it? Uh, it was a pretty physical game. You could tell by just about watching. Um, I don't know how many flagrants were called, but it was just one of those games where, you know, it was physical and we got pushed around a little bit in some areas and some spots. Um, but we got to, you know, look at the film and hash that away because we don't want other teams trying to come in and think they could just push us around. I mean, you could do all you want in practice, rough each other up, re rebound and drill, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it just comes to just being a man, um, not letting somebody push you around and invade your space. So, I mean, we could do all that, but at the end of the day, it's just about you being tough and standing your ground. Uh, you know, we've been playing well lately. We got some guys that have been stepping up and playing well individually. And um, the glory is going to come with when you start winning and playing well. But you have to remember that we have a long way to go. Uh, you have a long way to go as a player. None of us are finished products. You just got to stay focused on getting better every day, stacking good days together, and not feeding into all the, the glitz and glamour of the glory that come with playing well because – you know, nobody's going to talk highly about you when you're not playing good. So you just got to remember that you got to continue to stay better, continue to stay getting better, and just, you know, block out all the noise, whether it's positive or negative, and just zone in on your work. I mean, I don't know what other teams are going to do. Um, as for them to find out and, and us to prepare for, but, I mean, 
Oscar get beats up, gets beat up all the time, just because how big and strong he is, and I know it's probably tough on him sometimes, just because he feel like you know he's getting whacked on, but just because how big he is, he's expected to play through it sometimes. But I try to tell him just to keep his head. You know, that's the only way that you can stop him is having him out of the game due to fouls or other situations. But you know, Oscar's gonna he's gonna figure that out and. He's, just, he's going to do a better job of keeping his head in the future. Tyler Greenberg. Hey, John, how much of a difference does Dave not make when he has a night like tonight when he's scoring the ball well and staying in the red zone and pulling his own defense? Yeah, I'm, I'm extremely happy and proud for Dave Young. Um, I know it's been, it's, it'd be tough for him sometimes, but been, he's been sticking with it and fighting through, and tonight was his night, like I said. Last game, um, it's, it's going to be somebody's night every night. Um, you just wait, wait your turn and fight through, and, and good things are going to happen for you. And that's exactly what happened for Davion. He was aggressive. He made shots. Um, but he always defends. He always rebounds well. Davion is just, he does a lot of stuff for us that probably doesn't always show up in the stat book. But tonight, it was good to see him you know, really get off, make some shots, and have a huge game scoring the ball. It was nothing about what they did. We just missed shots. We all we got great looks that we like, and they just didn't go down. And sometimes that's how the game goes. Um, that's really all I can say about that. We got the looks that we wanted, and we just didn't drop them. about COVID and all that, like, it's a real thing, but you got to just take it day by day. And I mean, we're here to play basketball. I know there's a lot of health concerns and stuff that goes on, but we have the right people that are taking care of that stuff, like our, our trainer, Jeff, and other staff that are, you know, that's a part of their job. They take that off our plate so we can just go out there and play basketball. So we're really locked in on practicing watching film, we're getting better every day. And then when stuff like that comes, we'll deal with it then.